Hi, uh, my name is Ryan Poe, uh, Ryan Michael Poe, and um, where's the thing? Let's see, uh, well, the truth is, uh, God told me things a while ago, and I'm mentioning it now. Um, and it's important, so I want you to know and remember and, and figure. Figure, I do it. Look into things, document, salaries, accounts, ideas, identities, information, and really look into, you know, if you want to, if you're interested, if you find it, this video, you know, look into it. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, I used to, I grew up when I was between 13, wait, between 3 and 16, I lived in Powell, Missouri. And I, I, drove through Mar I drove through Martin City a few times, and then as an adult, I traveled in between Kansas and Missouri, because my mother uh, lived in Belton, off of Route Y with her new husband, Paul. And I lived in Kansas with my dad here, and I never relocated really to, I mean, to live most of my time out there in Belton. But I drove in between uh, Kansas and Missouri several times. Uh, so I, had, you know, I, you know, I just grew up in Missouri, and, and I visited Kansas, City, Missouri. I visited. I drove to Martin City from state line. Uh, you know, and so in Martin City, I found Fiorelli's Jack Stack Barbecue, and, and I drove by. I had a green banner with his red letters that said Fiorelli's, and it's called Fiorelli's Jack Stack. Not they put one in Overland Park a few years ago, but it's new. I never had an odd feeling about that one, but the original one was in Martin City. As Fiorelli's, Fiorelli's, say it and see the Spurs witness it. But I always drove by, I never ate there, but my mom and step, her husband, I, uh, Paul, I, I, they, they've eaten there and said, oh, it's good food. No, this, I never eaten there, and I drove by the Fiorelli's Jack Step Barbecue, you know, after I was older. And grew spiritually with God, and he was telling me things. And I always had a bad feeling when I drove by, and he said, Brian, you have a bad feeling, and you never ate in there, because it's a, it's a mafia. It's a mafia f crime family barbecue. Fiorelli's Jack Stack. As a green, you know, in, it's in Martin City. There's a green banner, as has red letters for Fiorelli's. And uh, God told me the reason why I had a bad feeling every time you drove by it, right? At your older ages, I was telling you spiritually, don't go there. And I said, why? And he said, it's mafia. That's a crime family's barbecue. Uh, I said, oh. So, you know, and so I, I just, that's just what God told me. I was a Christian all my days. But I did, I drove by when I was younger, the always oh, Fiorelli Chef Stack Barbecue, you know, but I never ate there. Nope, I never ate there, but then, my, you know, after I grew into my 20s, I was driving by there, and, you know, I was growing in my faith. I'd read the Bible all the way through, a chronological NIV one year Bible. I read it in 10 months, you know, because I wrote days, I read, I read the book Days Ahead. It's chronological, it's written in the years that the Bible books were supposed to have been written. It's formed. The pages in the books were, were put in that chronological NIV one-year Bible into separate days, and it was supposed to be, uh, well, it's supposed to, I wrote it all the way through, the whole thing, about 10 months, because I got real excited when I was reading it, and uh, I read days that had some, some of the days, uh, but I tried reading the Bible before I bought that chronological one-year Bible, all the way through, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it with the standard Bible, so... Uh, but anyways, and, and while I had that NIV chronological one-year Bible, I was also, I had a regular standard Bible. I read that NKJV, the New King James Version. I read the NASB, the National American Study Bible. And I read the NIV, the Inhu International Version, NIV. And those are the three ones I like. I don't like, you know, so, I don't, I don't read any other version, honestly. Those ones I was comfortable with. They have a lot of different versions out there. And uh, the Reformed, you know, words, all these you know, I, I like the NKJV, the NASB, and the NIV, and I had those standard Bibles just to memorize scripture from during that time that I was reading the chronological one-year NIV Bible. And so, 
as I was growing in my faith with God, you know, I'm working on my own status morally. I claim celibacy after years of, you know, I was doing a lot spiritually and I was working on things. I was jogging. I was uh, lifting weights. I was uh, reading the Bible, studying scripture, memorizing, and God was built in me spiritually and started opening my mind to the world around me and physically giving me auras about things. Uh, it's the truth. Um, someone in heaven, and I've had affirmations in my dreams. God, the heavens reached back out to me, even in my unconscious mind when I was having dreams. I had three or four supernatural spiritual dreams that had affirmations for me from heaven that had to do with my faith in Christ and my eternity. The, the actual, the, my creator, what it, the, the author of my faith, Christianity, what he really looks like, not the white Caucasian Jesus with the long scraggly beard that's real loose. That long hair it was he didn't look anything like that nope and his uh robes were way different and he had two sashes over his chest and a gold rope and god told me that yeah pretty much in the end he told me that i was the author of your faith right so but i've had uh three other dreams besides that one it was all affirmations in my faith god and um so the heavens reached out to, so i know the heavens received the bible but it, it, you know getting into things so i'm, I'm trying to prove there's a validity here in my statements, and I'm trying to help you understand that. Um, you know, here's the thing. See, I was talking to God after he ceased going my mind. He started giving me revelations. I started having uh, prophecies, revelations, and philosophical ideas about Earth and humanity and all of it. Uh, around, well, around 25, but I started seeing ghosts and apparitions of people and hearing stories about people that lived but died that were murdered when I was about 23 or 24. And then about 25 or 26 years old, I started having philosophies, revelations, and I, uh, well, philosophical truths about the earth and humanity and all of it. And all, you know, and after I moved back from Utah, I moved to Utah to relocate after my uh, separation from my first wife. She, uh, the, the divorce was finalized in September of uh, 2016, I said, I'm not happy in the Midwest, you know, and, I, and before then, between the ages of 7 and 15, I went on, like, three family vacations, and I had seen the whole West Coast, I'd been to the East Coast, I'd been into Canada, I'd seen Niagara Falls, and I'd been to Hawaii, I wasn't happy in the Midwest, <clears throat> so I, I wanted to relocate somewhere I was happy geographically, and originally I moved to Colorado, I was there for a few days with my friend Jessica, who I had a baby with eventually, but... Well, I said, I don't feel comfortable here. So, you know, we ended up in Utah in a miraculous way. I can't explain it because I don't have the time in the video. Um, but if I like the mountains. That's why I was moving to Colorado. But I didn't. Have, I had a real uneasy feeling in Colorado. And so I said, Jessica, we've got to move. And she said, okay, where are we going? And, you know, but anyway, so we ended up in Utah. And uh, I was real happy there. It's a good place. But my broadest revelation in Utah, I started having revelations in Utah, God was opening my mind, and he told me, Kate, when I was on the tracks, the Utah tracks, uh, an angel told me, KTF, 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 and I said, you be, keeping the faith kills the fire, keep the faith, and fire is destruction, and an angel, while I was riding the tracks in the blue line, um, was giving me the, the, uh, acronymical term for keeping the faith kills the fire, keep the faith, and fire is destruction. So, KTF, 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 and when I moved back from Utah, and I was, I was endangered, I was looking for an apartment with Jessica, and we weren't approved for one, and I was, it was dangerous at the homeless shelter, I was assaulted, they were shooting up drugs, there was drug, I was assaulted, uh, I was assaulted where I got a job at a Shell gas station, uh, you know, there's a lot of problems going on. I couldn't find an apartment, so I called my dad, and I moved back. Uh, I moved back in with my ex-wife. Only we got back together April of 2017. Uh, and that's when Jessica called me and told me from the hospital at University Medical Center in Utah, Jessica Rivera, right, I'm pregnant. I said, oh, my gosh, you are? She said, yeah. Uh, but so anyways, uh, there's a whole big story here. But I started having broader revelations after I moved back from Utah. And... And the most massive collections of revelations and philosophies I had about Earth and humanity, and all of it, it's real serious, not like, you know, nonsense, it's real. I was after I moved back from Utah, but they started the real big collections of ideas. It really was on the, when I was on the tracks in Utah, in Salt Lake City. 
declared KTF, 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 keeping the faith kills the fire, keep the faith. The fire is destruction. It doesn't mean hell, damnation. You know, and I have a whole theory about what hell is in the Bible. I feel like that's mostly man's imagination. Uh, mostly I do, because the creators kept people living at 98 degrees all their days, and the two fires that were natural to humanity, there's a sun in outer space, and there's a core at the, uh, of the earth that's magma, you know, and they're so far away from humanity, why would God judge a person and put them in a fire? But, you know, I believe that God could, if he was angry enough with where a person lived in its murders or feel, making other creations feel pain and torment of their own as a human identity, like your human identity, you're torturing living things that are feeling and feeling the pain that you're giving them. I believe God could put somebody in a fire for a time, not forever, you know. That's not insane. It's insane to believe that someone would be in a fire for eternity. That's what he told me. It's insane, right? Would you put somebody at, you know, an angel posed a question to me. He said, right, would you put somebody at the stake and just set them on fire? I said, no, it's insane. I wouldn't want somebody to feel that. He said, that's how we feel. But if you make all my creation feel so much pain while it's living, you know, hey, so there's a chance I might put you in a fire. You know, it has to do with how you make my creation feel, live, and know. You know, but, so there's judgment. I believe in a judgment, but hell, not necessarily, like, an eternity forever in fire. And if there is a fire, I said, you know, and the angel said, it's not forever. But, uh... So yeah, so anyways, getting to the whole truth and it all, uh, that's a lot of it, but I was telling you, like, Fiorelli's Jack Stack in Martin City, there's a, there's an organization behind that, and I had the spiritual auras in my 20s, every time I drove by it, and I felt real uneasy, and I was talking to God about it, and he said, Ryan, the reason why you said, you saw it, and he said, Fiorelli's, Fiorelli's, and then some say, what about your last name, Pope, hey, you know Pope? And English terminology means peacock. And it was the real last surname, buddies, is what Ryan would say. Oh, you know, our documents, I was part of my my country in origin regarding England. She was, that was big front teeth. But anyways, England, Scotland, Germany, Britain. Uh, I've got origins. I, my family documents my last surname were hidden. And changed. And God told me it was for a reason. But you're real special regarding your origins and your humanity. And Bo was a fixed class surname. So, But whatever. But there's a spirit and fear rallies. And that's what it is. It's a Jack Stack barbecue. And God says mafia. It's pretty much like mafia crimes. It's, I don't believe it. Well, but, you know, just believe what you want. But this is, a, you know, there's some proof in, you know, and all that. And then the other place that Ryan was real scared. Like, okay, so Ryan was uh, familiar with Kansas City because he grew up in Missouri. And uh, he had lived in downtown Kansas City, Missouri, and that's a whole different story. And I don't have the time in my video. I really don't, because when I record a video, I think I'm, I have about 50 minutes for YouTube. So I'm at 13 minutes and 24 seconds. <coughs> um, but here's the thing. So I was, I was taking my my wife and my girlfriend, a wife. At the, I don't remember. I think we're dating at the time because. Anyways, well, she's been my wife, she's been my girlfriend, because we divorced, we got back together, but never legally remarried, so I just said girlfriend. But I have her name tattooed on the back, on my back name is her, the name that she told me her name was, was Molly. Uh, but, so anyway, so we was driving in Kansas City, visiting the plaza, and I had to use the restroom, and I parked in the park, I was familiar with McCormick and Schmicks, I went to McCormick and Schmicks, I never felt bad going in there, you know, there's a... Armani store across the street from McCormick and Schmicks. There's a Jack Henry's. There's a real nice, expensive. They have well, this is expensive clothes. I walked in there a few times. You know, there's, there's a strip on the plaza there, and there's McCormick and Schmicks, and next to it was Buca de Beppo's. Well, I parked in the parking garage. I never had gone into Buca de Beppo's before this one, but I I parked in the parking garage behind Buca de Beppo's, and we walked in through the staircase from the parking garage down the stairs, and when I walked in. I felt like I was in shale, and I've had a study Bible, and you know what shale, I call it shale, because, uh, you know, and I had a, a study Bible, and it said shale was the realm of the dead, and when I walked in there, I felt the spirit of Satan, 
I sense coffins, I sense dead people, I sense lost lives and souls, and I sense the satanic presence. And they had a whole, so you walk down the stairs, there's a kitchen on your right, you go through the room, there's a bar on your right, there's little table sitting rooms on your left, and then there's a bathroom and a table sitting room, and I, you know, I'll tell you what, uh, it was just, it was one of the scariest things that has ever been in my life, and it just seemed evil, real satanic. Alright, take care. It's 15 minutes and 14 seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it off.